It's busy. I'm out in the woods next to my house and as you can see, spring has pretty much sprung. No need to say, I'm not getting any maple sap at this time of year. And if you're thinking about giving maple syrup for next year, you're probably thinking about choosing your trees. And this part of the woods, there are a lot of maple trees. Now basically, I have three areas in the woods that are, I'm going to find maple trees. The first area is here, right by my house. There's my house over there. And it goes along a thin strip up that way. Uh, I had to do some clearing to get to a couple of them, but I have trees over that way. And there is a spot back in the woods. A lot of trees have come down. It's very difficult for me now to find that spot. And with where it is, I don't really want to be hanging buckets there too close for if anybody's going to the woods from an another angle to find my buckets. And the other is back that way it's where the stream creek whatever you want to call it is and it can be hard to get to because i got lost it's so overgrown i did try to get some buckets in there late of the season because sometimes you can get later in the season from a spot that's farther and deeper in the woods didn't have any luck with that so i'm basically sticking in this area now i do have 10 trees that I can use in this area. It's a matter of figuring out which ones you want to use. If you have a large number of trees, it may not be that big a deal. If you don't have as many, then it's going to be determining which ones you want to use. Now this one right here, as you can see, years ago it had large part come off. I don't know if it got struck by lightning or exactly what happened. It had been all caught up and hanging in vines and branches over there. I couldn't even get it down. Eventually it did come down, but by the time I was able to get to it, it was pretty much rotting. Here's what's left of it. So this is a tree. It also has the damage here. And at least on this part, I don't know that I really want to do. If it wasn't for the insect damage that it's having, you can even see, it looks like termites have been in here. If you do have a tree like this and you're going to use it, you don't want to be drilling into this part of the tree. It's already has damage to it. You want to avoid that. And if you're going to use it, then at some part over on another side, I've got this offshoot here that is big enough for me to use. Now, that brings us to the next point. How big of a tree do you want to use? If you look online at certain sites, they will tell you 10 to 12 inches of diameter. Now, if you don't know what your diameter is, and you have to do a little bit of math. And you're going to need a tape measure. I have a little one that I, it's just 10 foot. And uh, it's small enough that I can carry it with me without any problems. It even has a clip on it. I can, if I want to, hang it on my belt so I don't lose it. And this tree is smaller, so the question then comes, is it big enough? And what you're going to want to determine is you're going to measure around the tree. You're going to find the circumference. From that, you're going to divide it by pi, or 3.14. That will give you your diameter. Now, with the 10 to 12 inches, the reason for that is because I don't want you to get trees that are so small that you're going to be damaging them. And you want to be able to get sap for many years to come. Well, the problem with that is, depends entirely on the location of the tree. There are a lot of things that affect the growth rate. Where it's located in the woods is going to affect it. The soil composition, all of that good stuff. Whether you could have a tree that's really, really old and not be very big around. I will be showing you one of those at the end of the video. So I did a bit more research 
and people are saying some of them saying six inches in diameter which is definitely okay if you have uh, box elder everything that I've said said six inches and another thing that you want to take into consideration is the type of maple you have now there are a couple of maples I've never seen they're very specific with where they grow just grow in very small areas and they only reach a maximum circumference of oh boy I don't even remember but they're not really big trees and uh, so if they're not a big tree to begin with then going with that 10 to 12 inch circumference you're never going to get to it so that's something that you want to take into consideration as well and I am now going to do a little pause in my video hopefully I'll do this right and I will show you the tree that I'm talking about oh and if you do want to figure out about how but your trees are growing in a year what you can do is measure around it you want to go diameter breast height which is dependent on where you read four four and a half foot from the ground and track that that'll give you something to go by a baseline for me I'm comfortable going with eight inches for DVH diameter breast height which means I'm needing an circumference of approximately 25 inches so I'm going to shut this off or pause this and go and look at this other tree okay this is the tree that I was talking about as you can see this tree is not really that big I put my hand around it and I almost can get my hand all the way around I did measure the diameter on this the circumference and didn't even get eight inches so looking at this tree, you would think that this tree is not very old. Well, this tree was here when we moved in. It's been almost 35 years. And it was about this size. It may have burned a little bit, but not a whole lot. So, if I, this is a tree I would never use because needless to say, it's definitely not going to be getting really big. But it definitely doesn't have good growing conditions. So... And that is the best example I know of off the top of my head to show about how age does not necessarily matter for size. So, hope you learned something, hope you have a nice day, and I'll talk at you later.